Hi, my name is Kelly Aitken. I'm the Business Development Officer for the Digit Me Too project, which is a European regional development funded project based at the University of Central Lancashire's Burnley campus. We provide up to 150 hours of fully funded support to help Lancashire based manufacturing SMEs adopt Industry 4.0. Our team specialises in data visualisation, data analytics, IIoT, the Industrial Internet of Things, as well as robotics and automation. This video is part of a series of videos designed to give you a more detailed insight into each of these subjects. Please contact me using the details on the screen to discuss how Digit Me Too can help your company. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the second series of short videos covering data visualization. My name is Patrick, I'm part of a team of engineers who work at Digit Me Too. In this video, we'll look at charts used in data visualization and how it can be used to help people quickly understand the knowledge contained within their data. There are two main reasons why you may be using visualizations, exploratory and explanatory. Exploratory, used to understand data and discover what is interesting to show to others. These should not usually be shown to a live audience as they will take too long to process the visualization and will not be as effective. Explanatory visualizations, which are used to communicate what you have found, choose most effectively you have to take into consideration what do you want the audience to know, and the best way to use data to make this precise point. Either information you discover, or knowledge you pass on to others, this can lead to more effective decision making through better control and predictions. When selecting and designing a visualization, it's always best to prioritize the message of a style, as its key purpose is to communicate information. There are many different types of visualizations available, however, there is a core set that will cover the vast majority of our needs. Having text can be very effective when trying to get a certain piece of information across. If there are only one or two numbers to share, communicating them directly with the numbers emphasized with supporting text can be very powerful. In this example, we have plotted the number of orders over the last two years to show the increase. However, it can be replaced to emphasize that there has been a 40% increase between the two years. You might not think a table is a visualization. In fact, it is. They're useful when actual data values matter as much as or more than the relationship between the data and also allow an audience to select which part of the data they wish to concentrate on. Different audience members may be looking for different data within the table. Although tables are not particularly useful in a live presentation as they can be distracting, reading the actual data rather than being presented with patterns which represent the data. However, it can be included in an appendix. Tables are also easier than placing data on a graph if several different units are present. People typically process information in a sequential fashion, reading down columns or across rows, comparing individual pairs of numbers. You want the emphasis of a table to be on the data itself and the structure of the table to almost disappear into the background, otherwise it competes for attention. This can be achieved using light borders or white space. A way of blending the detail of a table into something more visual is with the use of a heat map. The heat map colours the cells to show the relative magnitude of the values in each cell. Using a visual like this reduces the amount of processing needed by the viewer to understand the data, compare values and find what they might be looking for, making it faster and more efficient. In this heat map it is easy to see that there are higher values in October through March and that places further south are generally cooler. If instead we had plot this information on a line graph, it would be quite complex, which is why picking the right visualization is so important to best communicate what you are trying to represent. In this example of the average number of orders completed for each day of the week, we can see that more orders are completed at the start of the week. In Excel, heat maps can easily be created using conditional formatting. It's best practice to include a legend to help readers' interpretation, as can be seen in the top right hand corner. The Rain's visual system offers faster processing than its verbal system. Well-designed charts usually get information across quicker. Scatter plots are most useful for seeing or showing relationship between the variables on the X and Y axis. However, some people can find this graph complicated to understand. Line charts are commonly used to plot continuous data. This type of chart implies a relationship between the variables on each axis. They can show a single or multiple series. The X axis must be in constant intervals. If present, time should be placed on the x-axis. If placed on the y-axis, there should be good reason for this, as it will confuse people because they are used to seeing it on the x-axis. A bar chart is a common chart and is widely understood by all audiences. Time doesn't have to be spent understanding how to read it. 
it is easier to see the largest and smallest category as well as the difference between them. The reason we almost always see the y-axis on the left hand side is so the view can see how to interpret the data before the data itself. With a bar chart though, data labels can be placed inside or above the bars themselves so the y-axis can be omitted to reduce clutter. As a general rule, bars should be wider than the white space between them, although you don't want them so wide that people compare their area. Using a series of bars, we can show how variables develop, as seen on the left. We can have multiple values over time, seeing how each one changes and develops. Comparison of more than three variables becomes cluttered and it's hard to follow the trends of all variables. On the right hand side, we have a stacked bar chart, which has more limited use cases. It allows the comparison of totals across the categories and subcategories in a single chart. However, it can quickly become overloaded and it's hard to compare subcategories above the bottom row. It can be used to show percentage values so that all columns reach 100% at the top of the chart. A horizontal bar chart can be very easy to read, especially when the category names are long, as the labels do not need to be on their sides. Because of the way we read from left to right, your eyes see the category names before the data, unlike a vertical bar chart where your eyes go back and forth. Stacked horizontal bar charts are good for survey data, when done as percentage of respondents. When choosing the order of bars, consider what you want the audience to compare, if they have a natural order, what makes the most sense to go first, and what categories are most important. Charts to avoid. Pie charts. The human brain is not good at comparing areas. For this reason, pie charts can be quite hard to read, especially when there are similar sized pieces. Although some people think pie charts are more aesthetically pleasing, it is much better to replace them with a bar chart, as it's easier to compare values. Donut charts are a subtype of pie chart, so for similar reasons should be avoided, as here the audience is being asked to compare artlands for each section. Using a 3D chart can make numbers difficult to interpret, and adds unnecessary complexity. With 3D charts that have a 3D Zen axis, there's also the problem of data occlusion. Viewers can't see all the data at once, and have to rotate the chart to see other parts. Usually it's better to replace these with a heat map. If you have two different units in your data, it can be tempting to add a second y-axis. This is generally not advisable though, as it takes longer to interpret and decide when data should be read from each axis. There are different approaches to resolving this, but the easiest way could be to split the graph vertically but keep the same x-axis. The Gestalt principles are a set of laws of visual perception that describe the way in which humans interact and create order from visual stimuli. They define how humans group similar elements, recognise patterns, and simplify complex images when perceiving objects. They help you understand how an audience sees and allows you to identify unnecessary elements to ease processing of a visualisation. Clutter in your visualisation uses up more of your viewer's mental processing power, which can hinder transmission of a message. Some guess what principles that will be most useful for visualisations are proximity, similarity, enclosure, closure, continuity, and connection. Proximity principle, people tend to group together objects that are physically close to one another. This can be useful in table design as we can influence people into reading along the rows or down the columns. Similarity principle, objects that are similar in colour, shape and size are also usually grouped together. Again, among other things, this can be used to affect the way people read a table, specifying that rows should be read, removing the need for borders. Enclosure principle. Physically enclosed objects make people think of the objects as part of a group, and it doesn't have to be bold to do this, just shading the background will give the effect. Closure principle. Generally, people like things to be simplified and to fit the form they already have in their head. Due to this, people tend to perceive a set of individual objects, when they can, as a single recognisable shape. When parts are missed, our brain fills in the gap. Because of this, Elements can be removed while the element is still recognisable. For our purpose, borders and background shading around charts can be unnecessary. Continuity principle. Similar to closure, when looking at objects the brain seeks the smoothest path and will automatically create continuity even when it may not explicitly exist. Again, this can be utilised to omit unnecessary elements from a chart such as an axis line that the brain will fill in itself. Connection. The final principle. We will discuss again the effects of how people group elements together, this time with physical connections. It has a stronger connection than colour, shape or size, but not typically stronger than enclosure. However, 
This relationship can be impacted by thickness and darkness of lines to get the required result. This principle is most often used in a line graph to show order in the data. Tips for visualizations. Alignment. Create clean lines, horizontally or vertically. For this reason, left or right aligned can be more desirable than center aligned. Avoid vertical writing as it's hard to read, such as labels on the x-axis of graphs. White space can be used strategically to draw attention to areas that don't have white space, and the lack of white space can make things feel cramped. Avoid the temptation to stretch visuals to fill up the whole space. The more you make different, the less each stands out. If something is really important, make it the only thing different from the rest. In review, we have covered the main types of visualization, simple text, table, scatter, line, bar, vertical bar. Always consider what the main message is you are trying to get across in a visualization and what will be easier for an audience to read. We then covered Gessel's principles, proximity, similarity, enclosure, closure, continuity, connection, and how these can be used to simplify our visualization to make them more effective. I hope the knowledge you've gained in this video will help you improve visualizations. Thank you for watching.